behold, the resinous Pelibor, inspiring chefs around the world with its seductive, appealing name. Probably not. Either way, this is an interesting mushroom you've probably seen but never thought about eating. Harvesting and cooking. When you bring your resinous polypores home, even after you trimmed what appear to be the softest parts of the mushroom from the tree, you'll probably be left with a bit of woody trim. There's no reason to throw those woody pieces out, as they will lend a great color to soups and broths, just like the tender pieces, with the bonus that you can hold them in the pantry, instead of giving up valuable freezer real estate. I took the resinous polypore home, and got experimenting. After cleaning with a quick rinse, I made sure to trim them just like I would, a chicken of the woods using only the tender young margins, the closer it gets to the tree the more tough it will get. In the kitchen the first thing I tried was the basic saute, I heated some grape seed oil and threw them in the pan, added some salt after they started to brown, and finished with a knob of butter. They were okay, slightly chewy, and just okay. The second way I cooked them was stewing, with some salt and herbs to release their juice, then reducing the juice, allowing the mushrooms to gradually caramelize, in their own liquid. After one taste of the second method, I was sold. Basically the polybore, like most mushrooms, has a lot of water weight. When that water is released and then concentrated, their flavor blooms and comes alive. The flavor is much richer than I expected, there's a deep richness to them, which turned out pretty good. Interesting facts, the species was originally described as Bolletus resinosus, in 1794 by German botanist Heinrich Schrader. It has acquired an extensive synonymy in its taxonomic history, having been juggled between several genera. Peter Carson transferred it to Ishnodomar, in 1879 to give it the name by which it is currently known. It occurs in North America, Europe, Asia, and the Indian subcontinent. In the United States, it is common east of the Great Plains, less common west of the Rocky Mountains, and mostly absent in between. The resinous polypore, or Ishnoderma xenosum, occurs singly or in groups on fallen hardwood tree trunks, and branches sometimes in overlapping clusters. It causes a white to yellow rot of the trees, that separates the annual rings in the wood and often smells like anise. They can fruit until the first hard freeze. Type. Bracket fungi. Distinguishing features. This fungi's cap has a folded over edge above a spreading pore surface, making it look like mummified ears. Late fall polypore are velvety to touch, and sometimes they emit droplets of water, which ball up on top of the resinous surface like beads. When young it is quite thick and fleshy, with a pale brownish surface and a thick white margin. In maturity they are dark brown, sometimes with zones of color, fairly smooth, dry and tough. A tan to reddish brown resin often encrusts these fungi, whose interiors are white. There is no stem. Height. These do not have a stem to give it height, but caps are up to 25 cm or 10 inches wide and 2.5 cm or 1 inch thick. Habitat. Saprobic, which means obtaining nutrients from non-living organic matter, such as decaying plant or animal matter. This fungi can be found on the deadwood of conifers, and hardwoods and conifers. Prefers both recently fallen wood and on old downed wood. Spore print. White. Season. September to November. Gills. Not applicable. Instead, contains a sponge-like fertile surface of tiny pores. Edibility. This fungi is said to be edible when young due to high water content. Although edible this is not necessarily palatable. They become cork-like with age and inedible. Other name. Late fall polypore. Similar species. Benzoin bracket or Ishnoderma benzoinum is a similar polypore that grows only on conifers. It is sometimes treated as a synonym of Ishnoderma xenosum. The cap is thinner and it has slightly darker flesh. 
Thanks for watching. This has been Reconnect to Nature with your all natural, free, 100% organic and non GMO source of all things nature.